In this video, we will practice graphing a cotangent function. It has a change in the A value. The period is going to change, and there is a phase shift on this one. Let's start with the period, as we often do. We know that the period is always the regular period divided by the B value. For tangent and cotangent, what's the normal period for tangent and cotangent, you guys? Pi. Pi. So instead of doing 2 pi over b, we're just doing pi over b. In this case, the b value is, uh, is just 2. That means the period is going to be pi over 2. OK, so that's just pi over 2. What's the phase shift, you guys? Left pi over 4. OK? So in fact, I'm going to put negative pi over 4 just to be redundant about it. Left. Hey, whenever there is a phase shift, I recommend that you start your graph at the phase shift. For tangent and cotangent, these are the two graphs that we need two periods, one to the right and one to the left. So I'm going to start off right in the, in the center, in the middle of my graph. And like I said, I'm going to start at the phase shift. So I'll put a mark right in the middle of my graph, and I'm going to call it negative pi over 4 because of the phase shift. After that, I'm going to go four places to the right. One, two, three, four. That should be one period. And then I'm going to go four places to the left. One, two, three, four. That should also be a period. Now I need to number these values right away. The way I'll do that is by adding a quarter of a period. So I'm going to need to know what is a quarter of a period. So let's see, quarter period, quarter period, what's up quarter period? Well, a full period is pi over 2, so that means a quarter period is going to be 1 fourth of pi over 2, which is pi over 8. Every single one of these marks is always a quarter period higher than the previous mark. So I should be able to find the next value by adding pi over 8, a quarter period. So that's really what I'm doing. I'm adding pi over 8. But wait a minute. When I'm adding fractions, I know I need like denominators. So that's why I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So this negative pi over 4 is the same thing as having negative 2 pi over 8. So that's really what I'm going to add pi over 8 to. OK, great. So I have negative 2 pi over 8 plus 1 pi over 8 would be negative 1 pi over 8. What happens if I add another pi over 8 to that? It's a little weird. Zero. You get 0. Negative 1 pi over 8 plus 1 pi over 8, that's 0. So the next value is going to be 0. Um, that tells me what's going to wind up there later on. What always goes at 0? The y-axis. That's where the y-axis will be. Please don't, some of you guys are putting a vertical line at negative pi over 4. Do not put a y-axis looking thing at negative pi over 4. It must be at 0 at all times. Anyways, um, so I got 0. If I add another pi over 8, I'm just going to have 1 pi over 8. If I add another 1, I'm going to have 2 pi over 8. I left myself space to do any reducing that I need to do. There's actually not much reducing I need to do. So I have negative pi over 8. I have 0. I have positive pi over 8. Um, this is really the only thing that reduces. This will be pi over 4. Um, but I need those values going to the left as well. So just like I added when I went to the right, to the left, I'm going to subtract 1 pi over 8. So that's going to make the next one over negative 3 pi over 8 negative 4 pi over 8, negative 5 pi over 8, and negative 6 pi over 8. All right, there's a little more reducing I have to do over there. Not negative 3 pi over 8, though. Negative 4 pi over 8, that's negative pi over 2. Can't reduce negative 5 pi over 8. Negative 6 pi over 8 is negative 3 pi over 4. OK, so there are all your x values that you should have, all nine of them. Make sure that yours match mine. 
All right, so I'm going to get rid of all this nonsense now. As I mentioned, the y-axis is going to be at where 0 was. So I'm going to go ahead and put the y-axis in there right now. All right, you won't always see 0 as one of your options, so you'll have to put y-axis between the nearest positive and negative right in the middle. Okay, anyway, there's my y-axis. There is no vertical shift, so I don't have to worry about numbering for that. Um, there's, and the midline is not going to change. However, the uh, amplitude, well, it's, you know, cotangent doesn't really have an amplitude, but the A value must be recorded. So I'm going to put the A value. So I'm going to mark 2 up high, and I'm going to mark negative 2 down low. Okay, um, while I'm at it, I'm going to put a yellow dotted line for the A value. This is optional, um, but it just helps you m make your graph more accurate. All right, helps me graph my A value. Okay, now I have memorized a couple of things. When I'm dealing with the tangent function, I've memorized that the tangent function begins and ends with a point, and then there's a, an asymptote in the middle. On the other hand, when I'm dealing with a cotangent function, it begins, the period begins and ends with an asymptote, and then there's a point right in the middle. So that's what I'm about to execute right now. This is a cotangent function. So every period should begin and end with an asymptote, and then there should be a point right in the middle, on the midline. OK, so remember the phase shift is where we started. We started right here at negative pi over 4. So if I'm going to begin and end with an asymptote, then there should be an asymptote right here. Yes, Matthew. Yeah, if you've done all three, you can move on to the homework, my brother. Okay. Uh, and then at the end of the period, four marks over, ignore the y-axis, there should be an asymptote here at pi over four. Right in the middle, there should be a point. on the midline. So I'm going to put a point. So everyone should actually have a point at 0 comma 0 when you do this, if you're doing it right. All right, check that, that you do. Um, and then over here at negative 3 pi over 4, that was the beginning of the period on the left. So that should be an asymptote as well. Cotangent begins and ends with an asymptote and a point in the middle on the midline. So this is what I have so far. Now, the rest is all about approaching the asymptotes. Uh, but remember, whereas the tangent function is always increasing, so my little sketch over here, tangent was always increasing, so I used to do this for tangent. Cotangent function is always decreasing. So when I do cotangent function, I'm going to start off high, and then I'm going to go low, because cotangent is always decreasing. So that's what I'm about to do right now. I'm going to start off very high, and then I'm going to come low. Um, now the A value, halfway over, I should hit the A value. So my little yellow line is there to remind me to put a dot right there. So I'm going to fall from the asymptote, but as I do, I'm going to make sure that I hit that A value. And I'm going to hit it again on the low side, halfway over. OK. So that's what the left period should look like. Now I'm going to do the right period. Um, I think I need some more yellow lines. I stopped too soon with my yellows. 
So I'm just going to do the same exact thing. All right, and that's it. This is what your graph for number five should look like. So let's see. Um, vertical shift, there was none. All right, there was no k value on the end. Reflection, none. All right, there was no negative sign in the front. But vertical asymptotes. Just pick a vertical asymptote to start off with. Vertical asymptotes always start off x equals something. I always pick the first positive vertical asymptote or zero, better yet, if there's an asymptote at zero. There's no asymptote at zero, but I see one at positive pi over four, so I'm going to start with that one. So I have an asymptote at pi over four. But then I'm asking myself, how far would I have to go to get to the next asymptote? I'm noticing that the asymptotes are a full period apart. Four marks, that's a full period. So that means I'm going to have to add a full period to get to the next one. Well, remember that the period is pi over 2. So that means if I added pi over 2, that should get me to the next asymptote. But I want all of the asymptotes, not just one. So what do I need to do to capture all of the asymptotes? N. So I just stick an N in here. I don't care if you put it on the left side or the right side. N pi, pi N. Or I call it an integer, and you've got a deal. All right, an integer can be positive or negative. So that will capture all of the asymptotes going to the right and to the left forever. All right, that's it. I'm going to pause the video and see what questions you might have.